Agent Lance Goodbed. I think these items may prove useful. Regards from the future, Agent Jaden Hill. You're fine. Did you change my clothes? Yeah, but not the most important part. Nice. Oh! Perfect. Except me fucking it up twice. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to a very special episode. Episode number 170 of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, a show where we watch terrible movies. Tell you should too. I'm your host, Agent Lance Good, Bad. Joined as always by the other host, the futuristic Franklin, Fra Franklin McBad. I Franklin totally. Franklin McBad. Oh, Kyle, it's finally time. It's finally out. We finally got to watch it, and now we finally get to discuss <laughs> Wrath of the Viper Sniper. This is what you're meant to become. Look at me! Am I Joe? Oh, no. Ray calling herself a Skywalker is a joke. It's your destiny! Trevor will be put into a situation where he must make a choice. Lizzie wouldn't have died if you were there. Hang on to something. Are you ready? Hey! Kid! You! Oh, I can't believe this is happening right now! Me neither. <laughs> yes, so uh, the saga of uh, the Pocket Man and Cargo Boy is complete? Question mark? We'll mm, see when we get to mm, the end. Mm -hmm. uh, also, that <laughs> intro will make no sense if you have not watched the movie until we get to the yeah. end of this movie. Yes. So, uh, but it's very funny in context, yeah, I assure you. <laughs> Called the time charge. Nifty little invention. So, this is it. Uh, also, I just wanted to say before we got started, congratulations, Owen. That's a random one, but somebody out there, it's gonna mean a lot. <laughs> so, I get married? I don't know. Okay. We got a very specific message saying, like, hey, can you congratulate Owen? And I was like, sure. Okay. I don't well, know. Congratulations, Owen. Congratulations, Owen. Also, make sure you stick around. We have a very special message at the end of this episode, so. Stick around for that. Hey guys. Hey everyone. I'm Clay Moffat and I play the famous grill guy in Wrath of the Viper Sniper and Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. And I also like, you know, write, edit, direct, or whatever. Eh. Kyle, let's do it. 2022 film written and directed by Clay Moffat. Uh, Kyle, it's Wrath of the Viper Sniper. Um, I will say, we almost called the title of this one in our Rise of Sir Longbottom review. Mm hmm. At the end of it, we were speculating on what we thought the title of this movie might be. And at the time, we, honestly, it, we had no idea. Right. It, it was something, because obviously the Sniper Viper was the um, bait, if you yeah, will. Yeah, Viper Sniper was the yeah. setup for the third one. So we knew, we knew it was related to Viper Sniper. Our call was the Viper's Revenge. So what should the title be, Kyle? Let's see if we can predict, pre because it's something like... Shatter Bonanza, because I got to <laughs> fix all this shit. <laughs> Shatter Bonanza. No, it's going to be... Um, Something Viper Sniper. Something with Viper Sniper. The Viper's Bite. No. The Viper's Revenge. Yeah, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Could you be getting revenge for something? I don't know maybe. what. The Viper's <laughs> Revenge. Parkit Man and Cargo Boy 3. Three. I want to see it. Let's see it. Which, if you swap that around to Revenge of the Viper Sniper... It's pretty we're close. The, we're pretty, we were pretty close. Really we were in the, pretty close. We were in the ballpark. We were in the ballpark. So, um... To set this up and get you, if you have not watched the other ones recently or our reviews, first, I would highly recommend go watch our reviews at least before you get to yes. this because it is confusing uh, and you will need some background. I'm going to try to set it up here a little bit. 
We introduced at the end of the, th- the last movie that they're time travel and multiple timelines. Yes, they have multiverse theory, just we, completely yes. out the wall. We've launched into multiverses, and in our current timeline, Jaden is dead. Yes. He got killed back in the looking for the Fountain of Youth or whatever, <laughs> or in, <laughs> in the jungle. I don't remember. He got killed. And then um, at the end of the movie, after they came back, he was able to save everybody. But when they got back, eight, uh, what is his name? Robert Spade or Frank Spade or some Spade, one of the agents within Agent 62. Yeah, he betrayed betrayed them because he was. Within Section 62. Yes. I uh, betrayed them because he was in cahoots with the Viper Sniper yes. and just started he killing He killed them. everybody. He killed Barv. He killed Natalie. He killed um, Decker. It's finally time for a change around here. Mm. And I think it's... And this doesn't make any sense. In in the film, and I asked about this at the end of the second one, we he walks up the stairs off camera and we hear a gunshot, but we don't know who that was for. I think the implication in this one is that he killed Lindsay, who was the other girl mm. that was apparently, we'll get to that, but it was the other girl uh, student of theirs, like friend of theirs, that was like um, dating Pocket Man at the end of the last movie. Yeah. I thought we were studying. Can't yeah, hurt to take a quick break. I think she's dead too, because she's not in this one. It's This is all made more confusing by the fact that Half the characters are recast in yeah. this movie. <laughs> yeah, and also like there's multiple timelines. Yes. Which... <laughs> yeah, which might be how they 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 were kind of playing off the the recasting because Colin Phantom is a different actor yes. in this movie. <laughs> uh, uh, Diane is a different actress in this movie. Uh, but we open immediately on just insanity, Kyle. In this movie, we end we open on a, a fucking clown juggler just skipping down the street. What? <laughs> I was like, what, what? is happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but don't worry, Kyle and Trevor are on the case, and that is uh, Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. Mm. Uh, Trevor, Trevor is Pocket Man. Man Kyle is Kyle Cargo is Cargo Boy. Boy uh, played by Jeremy and Daniel, who we met both yes. of them on set. Very nice, yes. very friendly. They enjoyed our reviews, which was uh, nice to hear. <laughs> uh, but then, so they 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 encounter this 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 woman who I think is working for Viper Snipe. I don't know. She, he at the end of the scene he gets some necklaces from her that I yeah. don't know if we ever see again or know what they do. She's only in here for this one scene too. Yeah, was she in the previous movie though? There was that one woman. What do you want? She might have been in the pre- dude. Yeah. <laughs> He's so confused. The, 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 like this is the thing where we get into too many webs. Yeah, and there's just there's a rabbit a lot hole of moving just parts going a lot of moving parts oh boy um so uh they go and they confront her and pa- uh, cargo boy tries first and just gets his ass kicked She's by her uh mm. she like hits him with a ball like one of her juggling balls and it like breaks his ankle or something like that but as he's going there's a great there, there's so many quips in this movie Kyle there's especially uh pocket man is just a quip a minute in this oh yeah one. absolutely <laughs> like when when a cargo boy's like i'll i'll take her and and pocket man just walks over to the side and goes She's all yours. I'll just be over here. You know, just waiting for season three of One Punch Man to come out. <laughs> uh, quips nonstop. Because <clears throat> uh, then also after, so after Cargo Boy fails, Pocket Man comes in and he, he fights her and uh, she says something to him. Am my joke? Oh, no. Ray calling herself a Skywalker is a joke. You, you're just sad. You're just sad or something like that. Like, man. Get it? Get it? It's so the, many quips. So the many Gen, quips. Gen Z, right? <laughs> yeah. Singers flying out nonstop. That was my favorite clown shirt. Okay, that is a sentence that no one should ever, ever say. But he's able to, they beat her up and then they take these necklaces from her. And I don't know if they were related to, because it, it looked kind of like the necklace that Sir Longbottom had at the mm. last one with the waters from the fountain or something. It would be cool if, know. like, I don't know, if we called it like a time anchor, <laughs> and if every version of you wore a time anchor, you'd all be in sync with one another. Is that from something? No, I don't know. It's oh, it's not from something? 
That probably is. I don't know. Oh, I thought you were specifically referencing something because that could be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. We never will see these necklaces again or no. know what the heck they are. It does not matter. Kyle giving some sci-fi writer <laughs> ideas. I thought that was a real. I was like, that could be interesting. Um, but then we we launch into our opening credits, which uh, Invato opening. Uh, <laughs> Invato Element Marketplace uh, pre-purchased asset. Guess what, Kyle? I found those credits. Oh, baby. boy. <laughs> To be fair, they make it easy because they put the name of the artist in the credits at the end of the yeah. movie, so I'm able yeah. to just search just it. Type that it. in. Yeah. It's, it's not there. that hard, but yeah. Um, so there you go. Then we cut to Spade being driven to go see the Viper Sniper. Yes. He's going to meet up with the Viper Sniper. And he, he drives out into the desert wherever Viper Sniper is. And they meet up and he's like, yeah, I did it. I killed all the people. And he's like, good job, whatever. And then he's like, but keep keep up your cover or something like that. And next time, come alone. And shoots the car he came in. It blows. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Blows. It's great. Come alone next time. It actually looked kind yeah, of okay. It, it, looked, it looked pretty good. It looked, rel you know, relatively speaking, I was like, oh, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that my, looked pretty good. My guess is they had an actual fire off to the side. I don't think so. Well, maybe for, the, like, the, for lighting the lighting on their faces, yeah. maybe. But then there's clearly overlaid graphics of, oh, like, yeah, flames yeah. and stuff. And then the shot of the car exploding is clearly, clearly like, stock yeah. footage that they bought or whatever. But it splices together pretty well. Mm -hmm. Pretty well, all things considered. We all live in a world with no respect. And I'm going to change that. Now let me remind you of the plan. I know the plan, sir. Get you the pocket man. Then give me the pocket man, Spade! Then we cut back to the house, uh, and we gotta reestablish that Pocket Man and Cargo Boy are little fucking creeps. Yep. <laughs> I was like, what is this scene? <laughs> They're just sexually harassing their teacher. I'm like, fantastic. Oh, okay. Should we clap when she runs by? <laughs> Most definitely. The sports bar has seriously never been so worthy of an applause. Good morning, boys. Good morning. What are you doing? Watching you. Watching me. What? Watching me what? Run. Why? Uh, if I told you, it'd be a little too inappropriate. <sighs> but she makes him do 200 push-ups uh, and then leaves. It was maybe a little cute at first, but fantasizing about me? Like, that's really not healthy, guys. Push-ups, now. How many? 200 sounds like a good number. 200? Uh, and this is, again, this is Diane now, played by a different actress. Mm. Uh, uh, Natalie is her name. We met her. She was also very nice. Um, we didn't meet everybody because we were only there for one day. Sorry, we were there for two days of filming. And then and we'll, when we get to the scenes that we're in, we'll obviously talk yeah, about more yeah. stuff. Um, but there was a couple of these scenes also that we uh, that they were filming that we were just like hanging out. And we'll talk about those. We're about to get to a couple of them here in I mean, a we, second. We were there at the house. Yes. And boy, that house is nice. It's a nice house. It is a very nice house. Yeah, we went to the house. Um, but so they uh, Diane goes inside and she's talking to uh, Mark. And she says to Mark, like, hey, I want to do a tournament. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. What? I was thinking... It's time to have a tournament. A tournament? Yeah. It'll be fun. Okay. This is fun. What are we going to do with this? Uh, because she just wants to beat the shit out of Kyle and Trevor. I like I that like, idea. That's, that makes sense. Yep. That's fun. Plus, I wouldn't mind slapping the shit out of Kyle and Trevor. But then we cut from that to uh, the class scene, and we were there for We the were there for this, this one, yes. She scared me. I didn't know you teach this class. I am. Hang on, we're just gonna ignore the fact she just says it's her. Oh, boss said that I need to be tougher. Don't make me use my muscles. Uh, they're shooting the class scene where the English teacher comes in, uh, and I love she comes storming in and she slams her hands down on the table and she's like, Your old English teacher's dead! Sir, her is dead! Oh my. You scared me, Amy. I didn't know you're teaching this class. I am! Hang on, are we just ignoring the fact the that boss she just. said that I need to be tougher. Because she got shot at the yes. end of the last movie. Yes. And they're like, what? Are we? Okay. Shit! I have to do this tonight. Where is he? Have to do what, Freddy? Who are you talking to? 
Yeah, and we were we. So I have. Uh, you'll see. I have some beh uh, behind the scenes footage of this one when they were filming this. We were standing off in the corner <laughs> while they were shooting this <laughs> scene, which was a lot of fun. But there's one of my favorite moments is here, and it is a little reference, a little, little uh, callback, which I will. I give the movie props for this. They knew their audience. We get nice little callbacks and, and moments here and there for us true fans of the Pocket Man and Cargo Boy cinematic universe. Miss, miss sitting on the floor? Yes. It feels weird sitting in a chair again. Dude, I was just thinking that. It's so weird. They're like, uh, feels weird sitting in chairs again. And then the new agent, uh, uh, Alice. Well, Alice. What is, Alice, uh, played by Gianna, who we met. Very mm -hmm. nice. Uh, she's very friendly. She uh, she's like, what are you talking about sitting in chairs? And they're like, uh, you don't want to know. The last teacher was fucking crazy. How come? Observer never let us sit in chairs. She always said, you need to learn standing up. <laughs> yeah, she was a few weeks short of a dozen, but uh, we usually just sat on the floor. That sounds twisted. Yeah, she was crazy. Observer is dead. Oh my. Because we were so confused about that in the second review. Oh boy. We completely forgot that in the first one, that was like a whole thing mm -hmm. that they she doesn't let them sit in chairs because it's more, it's better for them to learn standing or sitting on the floor. So, I don't know. It's weird. But great scene. She comes in and screams at him. Uh, and then every time we get the reverse shot of her, you see the kitchen. Fucking Christmas yep, decorations, yep. baby. And by the way, we found out that has not come down. Nope. <laughs> that stays up because this is a rental house, by yeah. the way, obviously. Um, they rent this house every time they film one, uh, another one of the movies. Um, and that just stays up there all year. We have a picture. It's here it is of us. What? <laughs> admiring the Christmas decorations. <laughs> oh, man. But we this movie moves at a breakneck pace, let me tell you, because mm. it's only an hour long. We were like clipping along constantly. You scared me, Amy. I didn't know you were teaching this class. I am. Hang on, are we just ignoring the fact Boss that she just... said that I need to be tough. Oh, don't make me use my muscles. Don't make me use my muscles. Then we get this little scene where um, we cut down to the basement where the theater is. Yeah. So we also went down there. It's also where they recorded most of the ADR, we found out. Yes. I think that's where they went. They Because they said that the way they would do the ADR in this um, is they would literally shoot a scene in the house somewhere, then they would run down into the basement into the studio where it was relatively quiet and good, like, you know, acoustics mm. and stuff, and they would redo the scene, like, in there to get the ADR. Um, and to mixed results in this movie, <laughs> shall we say? Sometimes the ADR is, like, fine, and mm. sometimes it is rough, let me tell you. You think I'm your father. You are. You... You are my father. Uh, they have this like interesting scene, and I will say this, Kyle: all of the kid actors have gotten so much better. Yes, yes. Since Dude, the once movies. again, I don't know. It, it, uh, Daniel and uh, Jeremy are just like so they have good. good they have chemistry. Such good chemistry. They work really well mm -hmm. together. They really do have good chemistry together. Hmm. That actually sounds interesting. Huh. That actually sounds extremely boring. You are so weird. I'm not weird. You are weird. You're both weird. I am unique in my own way. Mm, that's a weird thing to say. And specifically, I thought um, Daniel, who plays uh, Pocket Man, he mm. kind of is the lead of this movie. Like, the story's about him, basically, yeah. at the end of this. Driver! What would Lindsay want me to do? He Definitely. actually does pretty he, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I thought, like, his scenes with Viper Sniper later and stuff, all things considered, I was like, yeah, man, well done. <laughs> I just don't understand. If you and Jay have such a bad history together, then why would he go back in time to help me? I wouldn't call it help. Jay is upset that certain events play out in the future, and he believes they're my fault. Well, are they? But they have a little scene here where uh, it's, this is Cargo Boy and Alice, and they're talking about, like, they're, what do they want to do when they grow up or whatever? And they they were like, in the process, they were like, like, do you want to, do you, do you want to become a full fledged member or uh, a, a member of Section 62 or whatever? Like, yeah. So, what do you want to do when you get older? Do you want to become a official agent of Section 62? I don't know. I actually haven't really thought about that. Well, that's kind of where we're here. So. Yeah, it's like you're already, no? Okay. But he explains that. It's like going to the it's like going to the X mansion, right? Yeah. The like school gets the children and be like, so you want to be an X Man? It's nah, like, <laughs> I want to be a line cook. I don't know. <laughs> I love my favorite thing in this scene is that <laughs> Cargo Boy is like, well, uh, Pocket Man always said that he wanted to be a baseball player. Pocket Man told me when he was younger, like really young, 
that he wanted to be a baseball player. I guess I could do that. I'm like, wait, so that's not your dream. I don't know if I'm coordinated enough, but baseball seems like fun. That was his dream, but you're like, yeah. maybe I could be a baseball <laughs> player. And then Alice explains that she was basically forced into the program by her parents because her parents are spies. I, I, don't, I don't know if we ever find out her backstory enough to know. My mom kind of forced me to become an agent. It's because both her parents were agents and she just talked about me becoming an agent of the great section 62. What, you don't like you? I like you. Uh, no, <laughs> I like it. It's just, I'm gonna be 17 next month and part of me just feels like I should be going to college. Well, it's the same thing with uh, with Kyle. Yes. Yeah, his, his dad was a spy. Right, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. But yeah, so she was forced into the, the program. She Good doesn't boy, really the, wanna be a spy. The fact that I remember that plot line. <laughs> Amazing. Hey Clay, you're doing it right. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> they there's this great moment in the scene though where they're they're having like a they're kind of flirting and I love he goes <laughs> You're really smart, Wonderland. And they call her Wonderland because Alice. Alice, yeah. yeah. I say, you're really smart, Wonderland. And then it just holds on this awkward shot of silence where he just stares at her. <laughs> you're really smart, though, Wonderland. <laughs> Sorry, what would you study? And then the scene continues. Yep. And yep. I was like, what is <laughs> what is happening? Sorry, what would you study? Uh, and then they hold hands. It's very cute. Uh, uh, amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Maybe. Then we cut outside like the next day and they're training mm. or they're doing target practice. Target, yes, yes. I was really hoping, Kyle, they were going to make a quip about shooting at the house and they didn't oh, They didn't no. make a joke about, no. why are we shooting at the house? I was like, come on. They didn't. But um, but they did, uh, they, they shoot and then Trevor or, yeah, no. Yeah, Trevor, Pocket Man, is like, it's confusing because there's the code name, then there's the character's name, name and then there's the, the actors, actors and i know all of them and i'm trying to keep them all straight in my head <laughs> um and then one of them's kyle which makes it even more confusing yes. so. <laughs> but uh, pocket man is like oh look at that cactus let's shoot the <laughs> yes oh there's also a part where uh trevor pocket man says two guns yes yes the two guns <laughs> man. and i was like is that is that a reference seriously Two guns? What? I like using two. Show off. Is that a reference? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But he does pull out two guns and shoots. Yeah. And they shoot this cactus. And by the way, uh, we, when we were there, so this is how they kind of weave this into the story. That cactus actually fell down, I think, the day before they started yes. shooting. Yeah. It, something had happened and it fell over. And this and, is like, a whole, we saw it. It's like a hundred year old cactus. Yeah. It's like a huge saguaro. Yeah. Whatever, it was like 30, it was, like, it was 30 feet tall or something like that. Yeah. It was huge. huge. And we walked out there and saw it laying on the ground. We're like, what the hell happened to the cactus? They're like, it just fell over before we got here. And yeah, they worked it into the yeah, It thing. doesn't surprise me with how many of those cactuses are like staked up out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, not too bad. <laughs> wait, are you shooting at the cactus? No, wait, wait, wait. You, you can't shoot at the cactus. Why not? Why not? But so they shoot it down and there's a great CG cactus that falls mm. <laughs> past the camera. It was pretty good. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Then uh, we cut back inside and they, uh, they're they looking at their course schedule. Mm -hmm. They have like this little digital, and we were there when they filmed this too. They have this little like digital like readout yeah. screen that has their coursework on it or whatever um and uh they're like talking about all the different classes they're going to be taking and stuff like that starting tomorrow we're going to be taking a science class perfect i love science so many things to discover and experiment on Ooh, i wonder if we're going to learn about space but then we cut to mark that is really shitty jeez holy shit fred don't be so creepy, dude. Who's talking to somebody. Because Mark has a line of dialogue here with somebody. I actually thought he was really good in this one, too, compared to some of the previous yeah. versions of this uh him wanting to... It was, he was after something, right? Like, he... 
I just watched this movie this morning, and oh, I was no. so... I literally watched it like two hours ago, and I'm already blanking on what the scene was. I think it's... Well, part of it is because I was so floored by the last 20 minutes of this movie that the beginning part of it just left my mind because I was so <laughs> amped up by how this movie ends. Because <laughs> it's nuts. Um, but uh, I don't remember... Anyway, something. Mark talks to somebody. Maybe it's Spade or something, and then he leaves. But then mm-hmm. Spade goes out to the garage, and this is where Adam makes his appearance. Yes, yes, yes. So good. So Adam, uh, the guy, there's a mechanic in this scene. He's working on the car. He's also got an agent, you know, badge or whatever. Mm. Um, and he's working on the, one of the cars, I guess, for the special agents. And Spade walks out, and they have a brief conversation. If you don't know, Adam is one of the producers on the film. He's also the guy who reached out to us uh, about all of this. He's the one who sent us the um, the screener of the second film uh, and that and was it pivotal in getting us to be yeah. come out and Adam, be in the third for, one. For everything we saw, Adam is Mr. Fix-It. The, the dude yes. had an answer to he just about He was not only thing. producing this movie, he was running camera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for much of the time we were there, at least, they had two cameras running on most Z, stuff. Z cams, he was running, I love Z cams. He was They're running so cool. uh, the B camera on... Uh, uh, on most of this uh, while Clay mm. was shooting. So Clay was directing, also running camera. Yes. You know, it's very limited. Uh, th- that was one of the things is it made it very clear being on set is they are doing this on the tiniest possible a, budget with mm-hmm. the fewest amount of people possible. It is, there's, they had like a, a makeup artist for a couple things on a few uh, elements here and there. Um, they had a script supervisor. Yeah, which I believe who buys uh, Jeremy's uh, Cargo Boy's yes. mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was she was great. She she yeah, was she, very she, friendly. Yes. She was a huge fan of the show. So shout out to Cargo Boy's mom, Jeremy's. I can't. I'm sorry. It's been so. This is, we went out there two years ago now. I can't remember anything, anybody's names at this point. Um, but yeah, she was a script supervisor. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Titus. Titus. Yeah. Uh, who was, he who was he was in another movie that we reviewed while, while we, we were, were there. there and didn't realize <laughs> Battlefield 2025. Yes. He plays the alien in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a picture with him that I'll put in. But he's also he was like crew on this. He did. He was doing behind the scenes photos. Yeah. But he was also doing he sound was, some. I think mm, he was also it's an kinda, extra in the park scene. Yeah, in the park you see him walking around in the background a couple times. Um, but he did so. There's just there was probably less than a dozen total crew members. I would say definitely less than mm-hmm. a dozen, at least on the days we were there, less than a dozen total crew members, and try and it was. It's clear that they're spread very thin, doing as much as yes. they can. Yes. And so, um, you know, I, yeah, it, 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 it is. It, it, but they were having tons of fun, and it oh, was yeah. a lot of fun it to be there. Wild, it was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun just to be able to hang out with them for a couple of days while they made this movie. Set. Look at this. It's clean. Look at this. It's a tiny Look at head. This. Look, see this? This fit on this man's head. Go for it. Show him. Amy, it's I got space. Big. I got room Look at it. I got room to spare. That's right. That's where the secret's at. You wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> But so in the garage, Adam is working on the car, and he wrote, I don't know, well, he didn't write it, Clay wrote it, I guess, but maybe he had input, I, I, I don't know, but he, he got the best death scene in this movie, <laughs> I would argue, he's working on the car, Spade walks out, and Spade has this deck of cards that has, like, the names of all the agents he's supposed to kill, like, the targets or whatever, mm. and he throws this, which previously these cards have just been, like, have the names, and he, like, looks at them, now they're weapons, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> Just he throws the card, it sticks in Adam's mouth and explodes poison gas yes. and he fucking dies. I'm almost finished with this. Long live the Viper. I. It's amazing. We see it later. It is the. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's it's totally like Gambit from X Men. Yes, thing. <laughs> yes, because he has exploding ones later. Yeah. We cut from there is to this conversation outside because they've now found Ad- Adam. I don't remember what Adam's character's name is if they even say it, but he's dead. So basically, <laughs> secret agent mechanic. Guy. Yeah. So basically, uh, Spade goes out and he has a meeting with. Um, Phantom and Diane. He's like, mm. look, we gotta work on security. Security shit around here. Let's get this over with. What is it, Fred? Can we talk for a minute about the fact that this base has absolutely no security? Like, none whatsoever. Agents are just getting killed left and right, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'll work on security. And my favorite thing about this scene, Kyle, is they mm. clearly, I don't know if, I don't want to say they clearly didn't have it written at the time. I don't know. We weren't here for them filming the scene or no. we were, we weren't watching it or anything. Yeah. 
but they shoot this whole scene from a wide, like a mile away, and then just ADR every single line into the scene so that they can say whatever they need them to say. Because I don't, um, my guess is maybe they didn't have all the details of this dialogue figured out, and they're like, well, we'll figure this out and wrap it up in post. Maybe that's not the case. I don't know, but it was very funny to me that this whole scene plays out almost entirely from a shot. <laughs> 300 yards away or whatever like that. It's fucking amazing. In the past six months, we've seen a crazy woman wearing workout clothes, a group of terrorists wearing penguin masks. Oh yeah, I forgot about those guys. Yeah, and let's not forget about the crazy clown thing. Well, we don't have to worry about her anymore. Thanks to Trevor and Kyle. But then also Spade floats the idea that there's like a, a an agent on the inside. There's a mole. There's yeah. a mole. And Diane's like, oh yeah? What makes you say that? And she kind of no, gives him a look no, and he's nothing. like, oh, I don't know, nothing. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I heard the Viper has section 62 agents working for him on the inside. Wait, where did you hear that from, Fred? What exactly are you trying to say, Diane? And then he's giving the class now about the villains. Uh, villains, yeah, yeah, the history of villains. The history of villains, because, but spoilers, Jaden is not in this movie because he died in the last one until later. We're almost to Jaden being in the yes. film. We're very close, don't worry. One of the most wanted villains calls himself the Viper Sniper. He murders snakes. Cargo Boy, I think you're pissing Colin off. He does not murder snakes. Uh, but he's going through this history and he talks about how the Viper Sniper uh, killed all these people and he was like a super talented sniper and he he killed 45 targets with 44 bullets and they're like what <laughs> during his first six months on duty he managed to kill 45 targeted men with 44 bullets it's amazing it's like call of duty kill death ratio going on yeah uh it's so funny um and then we also it, it's explained that Jaden fought viper sniper five years ago mm. uh, and lost uh, and almost died. Jaden fought him only five years ago. He nearly lost his life. This was their second meeting. They were first introduced when the sniper went by his real name, Jesse Doyle. No way. And that in a previous life, the Viper sniper's name was Jesse Doyle. And there's an implication, maybe, which is what we thought at yes. the end of the last one. This is what our surmise, or what we had surmised at the end of... Uh, Rise of Sir Longbottom because it is that he all is, the time travel. Yes. I mean, well, they did more of the time travel. Well, so. but we had thought he was Jesse's or Trevor's dad. Mm. His name's Jesse yeah. Doyle. We even have a name. Oh, yeah? So, what's the Viper Sniper's real name? Jesse Doyle. And, but we don't know who that I, I, I was like, like that's oh. supposed to mean something because yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, the, Trevor Doyle is the, uh, like, Doyle is his, the Trevor's name, Pocket Man. Oh. Oh. I think maybe it's his brother or dad. Dad could be his dad. He got married. He had a son, and he left his family when his son was only three. I didn't know that was his name. Yeah. Or, oh, that's right, because they do set that up earlier. They go Trevor Doyle. I know <laughs> this is a big day for you. Whoa, hey, how come mine says Trevor Doyle and not Pocket Man? Your name is Trevor Doyle, bud. Did you forget? Because that was the, and I, I looked back at the end of our Rise of Sir Longbottom review, and that was what we put together, was that, ah, he's his dad. Spoilers, that's not no. what it is. We'll get to it. No. It's great. You think I'm your father. You are. You, you are my father. Wrong. Then we cut from that scene to the tournament, and I was so disappointed. That we didn't even see any of the tournament. No, we got to the final fight. Yep. She's like, all right, and it's the last round. I was like, the whole point was I wanted to watch her kick the kid's ass. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, fellow agents. We have reached the final round of our tournament. Colin Phantom versus Mark Richards. <laughs> and it's not even it's not even any uh, any of the kids in it. It's uh, no. the the fighting Mark instructor and Phantom. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, they fight each other. I was like, oh damn it. Okay, pain you're gonna feel is gonna ripple through the last three generations of your family bloodline. <laughs> I'm adopted. The orphanage is gonna wish you were never born. Mark, your jokes always make me laugh. And uh, oh, also, it's important. Trevor uh, slash Pocket Man is very upset at Jaden because he didn't tell him about Viper Sniper potentially being his dad, yeah. like keeping the secret from him. Wait, 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 wait. So this guy could be my dad. What, we just never thought it was important to talk about this? And you're telling me Jay knew the entire time? Maybe. 
Trevor, you must remember, Jay didn't always put others before himself. If he knew anything. Yeah, if Jay knew, right. Basically, we just have the fight scene where um, Mark and Colin fight. Nothing really happens. Colin ends up m knocking Mark out. Oh. Then we cut to uh, <laughs> the world exploding under nuclear bombs. And I was like, wait, what, what? is happening? What? It also landed right after a, a commercial break for me. <laughs> so I was like, wait, did, I, did it switch to a different movie? <laughs> what is going on? Because we just see all these nuclear blasts going off on Earth. And then uh, Trevor wakes up. He was having a nightmare. Mm. Um, and the, uh, this the implication here being... He, call, he causes the end he of the world. He causes the end of the world down the road. And so he was having like nightmares from the future or whatever uh, kind of idea. Um, but he wakes up and uh, he's like, well, this is fucked up. And then we cut, because it's that night, we cut over to Diane getting ready for bed. Uh, and she like, she gets up and she goes and gets in bed. And then Jaden just poof, just poof. teleports into the room. He's like, yes. I'm here. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? All okay. right. Yeah. I don't care. I'm ready for it. Give me Agent Jaden Hill, baby. You look great. <sighs> Still trying to sweep me off my feet. We're married, Jay. It's okay if you look. And then he explains to Diane that, uh, well, she explains to him, like, hey, I know you said this time travel stuff's confusing, so I'm just going to let you, like, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> yeah. she's like, you just said the time travel yeah, just, stuff, like, you would handle it or whatever. Just, like, don't think about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically trying to cut off some questions at the head here. You never really explained to me how these multiple timelines work you just said that you have everything under control and i don't know if i believe that and i was very confused at this point but he also she tells him that like everybody's dead mm. she's like oh by the way while you were not here you know everyone yeah everyone's uh, dead decker got killed natalie like, got yep, killed barb Lindsay, got killed Lindsay, your daughter got killed yes, which i was like i, was like, I don't on, remember I know that, was that a... being the case there were a few others including Lindsay. Lindsay. Like my daughter, Lindsay? Yeah, um, and Natalie, too. Jesus. Yeah. That she was his daughter? Uh, he didn't have a whole lot of reaction to that. Either. Yeah, he also <laughs> does not react at all. I swear, and, and Adam or Claire, somebody, if you were watching, can you, was it, was it Lindsay in the last movie, his daughter? Because I don't remember that at all. Please clarify what is going on mm. there. Uh, or what is going on. Um, but anyways, uh, he's like, she's like, how much time do you have? Because I guess like when he comes, you can only stay for a little bit before he has to leave when he's yeah. like time traveling or whatever. How long are you staying? As long as you want me to. Good. Then we can finish this talk in the morning. Um, and he's like, well, I have as much time as we need. Let's do it. And then they start making out and we get the loudest, most obnoxious kissing noises, which also might be the same sound effects they use when people chew the memory gum in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's so funny. Then uh, we cut back outside the next day and there, this is where he shoots the two guns. Yeah, is this, yeah. they're shooting two guns. <laughs> Two guns? What? I like using two. Show off? You don't. You're never gonna use that. Okay. When are you ever gonna you're, use you're it? You're right. There's, there's no reason to use two. You're right. And then um, Jaden just walks up. Walks up. And they have no, no reaction. <laughs> Wait. Stop. Stop. You both remember Jay? Duh. Yes, of course. Hey guys, you remember Jaden, right? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> like, what? He was dead. You're not even gonna ask where he, how is he here? <laughs> they're just like, oh, I guess he time traveled, whatever, who cares? Uh, or maybe, just, maybe they're just so jaded because of all the multiverse going on. They're just like, hey, this is another version of Jaden. It's like, hey, yeah, yeah, whatever, up? yeah. Okay, well, then I'm assuming you know what today is. Target practice, gentlemen. Show Jay here what you can do and try to make me proud. Okay, got this. But that's funny because then I looked back and I realized that after in the in in Rise of Sir Longbottom, they fight uh, Sir Longbottom in that field with all the kids, mm -hmm. and then um, 
Jaden and Natalie teleport, or not Natalie, Jaden and Diane teleport into like the jungle or whatever back yeah. in time. The kids are not in the movie for the rest of the no, movie at that no. point. So I, we don't even know how what they know about they would, what happened. They would need her to relay the information, but that, yeah, that, yeah, that. I don't know. So we just move right along, and then my favorite thing is like, you weren't kidding about needing better security because <laughs> Viper Sniper. Just Walks right in. This is standing on their fence, like, hey. Yep. <laughs> nice work, Trevor. Yeah. Nice work, Trevor. If you don't listen to me, I will blow the brains out of Diane's head. I'm guessing that's the Viper Sniper. Cargo boy, shut it. What's up? I'm Viper Sniper. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And now, obviously, the idea is we'll find out that he, one of his henchmen is there with the mask and it's spade, like mm. we see them later. Um, so he just, like, helped him in or whatever. But it's just like, how did he, none of you guys noticed the main villain walk right up to you in the backyard? <laughs> okay. Amazing. But he wants to talk to Pocket Man alone. Mm. Now, this is what I want. Pocket Man will come talk to me privately. If you are not Pocket Man, you will stay put. And Jaden is like, all right, man. If you say so. And Trevor, uh, Pocket Man, is still mad at Jaden for not telling him about this stuff. So Jaden and Viper Sniper go have a conversation. Mm, and Trevor and Viper Sniper. Sorry, yes. Trevor and Viper Sniper go yeah. have a conversation standing against the side of the house. And this is where he's like, yeah, do you know who I am? And he's like, yeah, you're my father. Yeah. You think I'm your father? You are. You, you are my father. Wrong. And no, goes, no. I'm you. That's what Jaden wants you to think. <laughs> I'm you. That is what Jay would say. He would do anything to cover up his mistakes. Jay is the biggest liar you will ever meet. He doesn't care about you. Look, then why are you telling me this? Who are you then? I'm you. I'm you from a different timeline. Ba -ba -ba! Jay, Viper Sniper is... Trevor from the future. It's who he becomes in the bad timeline, Kyle. Uh, which Maybe is I'm fun. so genius that I blew your mind. <laughs> it's, wait, what is that from? Seinfeld. Uh -oh. Or am I so sane that you just blew your mind? I thought this was so much fun. I, I loved the misdirect, and then it's Trevor from the future. I was like, they got us. Because, again, we thought at the beginning of the last, or at the end of the last one, that it was going to be his dad. And I don't know if they saw that, and they were like, fuck you. Yep. Clay was like, yep. fuck you it's, guys. It's, it's like the, uh, it's like the uh, twisted pear situation. Even medals that I'm sure he, he's not supposed to have, like the Purple Heart, because who's gonna who's gonna harm <coughs> Neil Breen? How could Neil Breen have ever been injured in combat to receive that medal? He's the best. You're the best. Unless he stole it, stolen valor. <laughs> Bizarro Neil Breen. Somebody tried making a clone oh, of Neil Breen. Oh shit! Oh shit! That's a movie that needs to be done. We gotta fuck this whenever he's kickstarting right now. He needs to change it, Neil Breen. Somebody clones you, and you have to battle yourself. Think about it. You get to be the most evil, badass dude of all time, and all good at the same time. I mean, you kind of do that already in the movies, but yeah. <laughs> My name is Cade. I have an identical twin brother, Kale. I miss my brother. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will say, in the second movie, it's it's not like we didn't just come no. up with that. The movie very clearly no, sets yeah, up they, the they idea that, that it's up. his dad, and we just kind of connected the dots there. But I don't know. I don't know. I be I would be really interested to know if the plan originally was for him to be his dad, and they changed I, it to being him from the future, or if it was always for it to him be him from the future. I would have enjoyed uh, a little because this would totally be within Trevor's character as well. Is when they get the conversation, it's like, do you know who I am? Is or uh, it's like that. He's like, I'm you from the future. And Trevor's first response isn't. I go bald? <laughs> <laughs> that actually would have been right in line with his character. Yeah, that would have been right in line with his character. About 25 years into the future, Jay went back in time till now. Or more accurately, a decade ago. His goal was to save the world for me. Uh, wow. Uh, that is really confusing. It's about to get much, much worse. So anyways, he reveals he's him from the future, and it doesn't really matter. Um, it, do, it does, obviously, it's very important. It's the whole point of the movie. Um, but he leaves. He's basically like, look, mm. now you know, blah, 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 I'm out of here. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't believe you. 
I don't need you to believe me. This is what you're meant to become. Me. And then uh, as he's leaving, he meets up with Spade and they're just in the backyard and they just walk into the like the corner of the yard. <laughs> it's like, where are you guys? Okay, yeah. great. All right, bye. Um, but now we cut. It's later that night, I think. Pocket Man is like, I'm getting out of here. This is this is bullshit. Jaden lied to me. I shouldn't be around here anymore. I'm leaving. And Cargo Boy's like, no. So just like that, because some stranger came up to you and told you some questionable things. It wasn't just someone. It was me. And what if what he says is true? Trevor, you're Pocket Man. I'm Cargo Boy, just like always. You're really just gonna let some stranger change you? You can't leave. We belong together. <laughs> We're best friends. And they get Pocket into a Man fight. and Cargo Boy forever. I have died every day waiting for you. Uh, Are yeah. we really gonna fight? Yeah. We're really about to fight. If you don't move. And they beat the shit out of each other. It's great. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed watching them fight each other, which I think they've done in at least one other movie, but. <laughs> You're not as pathetic as I thought, Cargo Boy. Oh, he also says, uh, Cargo Boy says to him at one point during that fight, Lizzie wouldn't have died if you were there. And I'm like, I don't know where they were. Yeah, what? Because that was that is... end scene, I think, from the last movie, the post credit scene. We don't, yeah, they were, were, none of them were there. Yeah. None of the kids were there. I don't know where they were. I, don't, I, I truly don't know where they were because everybody else is there. Yeah. Including then, the people that were in the field fight earlier. Like, it's not like they were still like coming back from wherever that fight was. I don't, I don't understand where they were for that. But anyways, um, he just taunts him and is like, Hey, Lindsay wouldn't have died if you were there. And I'm like, I guess she did. I guess she was the one that got shot off camera. That's the only yeah. thing I can surmise yeah. from this. Then Pocket Man gets away though, and I love this scene so much. He's on the run, Kyle. And what does Pocket Man do when he's on the run? He needs something to eat, yep, bud. Yep. He breaks into the same backyard. Yep. And we are from the really... first movie. And this is Clay. <laughs> Clay comes busting out, and this scene is great. Hey, kid, what are you doing? Thanks for the lunch, buddy. That's my meat. Come on, man. Hey, kid. Not this time. <laughs> this scene is so much fun. Clay comes out and he's like, oh, you again? <laughs> or he goes, not this time. Because he thinks he's going to steal his hamburger or whatever. Yeah. And they get into a fist fight. And then they get into a spatula yeah, they fight. Yeah, get a spatula and tongs fight. <laughs> so, <sighs> still on your own? Yeah. yeah. Seems that way, doesn't it? Oh, I can't believe this is happening right now. Me neither. <laughs> it's great and then eventually they stop and I love Clay's crushes this scene he should act mm. more I thought he was legitimately very funny in this scene because as he's leaving he's like ah you can just have some man and like he gets punched in the face he's like I don't, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can just have some food I don't care <laughs> oh. no you can just have some just help yourself really ah yeah thanks yeah it's a lot of fun. I, lo I I thought that scene was a great callback and tons of fun. Come on. Sorry about that. Uh, you like a ninja or something? Uh, it's, it's a long story. Then we cut to the baseball field. Mm. Um, the first baseball field, not the one we were at. Because yeah. they filmed these at two different baseball fields. So this is, uh, this is uh, they have a little conversation. Uh, Trevor is like hitting some hitting some baseballs yep, we set baseball. up earlier he wanted to be a baseball player mm -hmm. nice. and yeah he's hitting some baseballs and him and Viper Sniper talk and basically the gist of it is that also this little baseball field has like the tiniest little wrapping cage yeah oh, like it's the so, backstop or whatever so yeah <laughs> it's very small um but basically Jaden thinks that eventually down the road certain events will happen that the Viper Sniper causes and that that leads to the end of the world and Jay, uh, and then Pocket Man's like, well, do you do something that leads to the end of the world? And he's like, well, when I traveled back through time to get here, I chewed some memory gum, so I don't remember. <laughs> Just before Jay came back, I was forced to chew some memory gum. I managed to follow him back, but I can't remember anything that happened in the future. If I were something like that, I was like, <laughs> wait, what? I was having a little bit of trouble following yeah. what was going on here, I'm what? not gonna lie. Well, it sounds like something big must have happened. 
Baby. You know, as weird as this is, it's nice spending time with you. Or me. I'll be back here tomorrow if you want to meet up again. But he's like, look, it's been nice talking to you, and they kind of become friends at the end of the scene. Mm -hmm. He's like, come back, and we'll talk again more tomorrow. And he's like, okay. And he leaves, and they're going to have another conversation the next day. Um, uh, we get more of Trevor just walk, like walking about and surviving. I guess if you will. Oh, does because go to like oh he goes there and he steals store. the water bottle or whatever from the <laughs> store. Yeah, just a random person. He like walks up and he can't pay and he just steals a bottle of water and runs out. Hey, wait! Then we cut to a, a Jay is talking to somebody and then he starts freezing and glitching out yeah he's getting like pulled into the time yeah matrix? like the time matrix or whatever we're gonna need some help no not now and then kyle there at this point there's like 20 minutes left yeah. in the movie yeah, we're introduced to an entirely new concept, an entirely new. Completely they are different plot time point. masters. Tara, where are you? I'm here, my brother. I'm here with you. I need more time. Jaden, you know that is a lie. As I've told you many times in the past, time will never truly change anything. But we're so close. Fucking time lords show up or something yes. like that. Uh, Taro is the first one named, and Raz, I believe, is mm -hmm. the other one. It'll make a difference. I just came back from the future of this timeline and it's messy. Raz, not now. Hold on. Trevor still becomes evil again? You can see that. We can see everything. Raz. There are these two like alien god creature deities or whatever that like, we, we met time. Raz, but we didn't meet Taro. Because Raz was there for the scene that we were part of. Yes, when we were filming. Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought you meant in the film. Yes. No, we, yeah. Raz was at the scene when we were filming because she was there. We, you'll see her in a second. But no, Taro shows up and he's like a time, he can control time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Jaden, you're a good person. Taro, please. I don't want to watch Trevor grow up into a monster again. Do you know how many times we've gone back to help him? Of course I know, brother. Or did you forget I'm the one controlling time? He's never stayed good this long before. I think that... If he sees who he becomes, it'll make a difference. It's explained that in the future, they saw that in this timeline, Trevor becomes evil, even in this timeline. Yeah. And that no matter how many times, so so basically, Jaden has been trying to save Trevor, Trevor from becoming the Viper Sniper and ending the world in like a lots of timelines, yeah, like over and over and over again. He has like this innate evilness that yeah. cannot be overcome. And Jaden keeps trying, and this is their eighth attempt to reset the timeline yes. and make it so that J fucking Trevor doesn't end the world. There is one way Trevor will remain good during his life and your ridiculous galaxy saving time travel experiment works. Only one. But the Masters of Time cannot help you figure it out, though. Trevor will be put into a situation where he must make a choice. It's not likely he'll make the right choice. And each time has failed. And this time, if they fail on this one, they're just going to reset the timeline again. But, but they're all just going to live their lives as normal and die. Like, they're not going to try again. They're not going to do it again. This is it. If it doesn't work this time, this is the end. Sorry. Yeah. Your experiment is coming to an end. If Trevor fixes his destiny and does not become the Viper, and this timeline can continue. If not, we will rewind the clock again. However, instead of trying for the the uh, seventh. the seventh time, everything will be erased. And Jaden's like, okay, I guess. I was a little lost at this point because I was like, we're, there's like 20 minutes left, and we just introduced an entirely new concept. Yeah, to this what? Thing. what? They're fucking time lords now. What is going on? We will go back to before you learned of our power, and this timeline will be gone forever. All of you will about the events as they originally happened and die. Then we get to the baseball diamond for the big climax. Yes. And this is, we were there for this. We were there for filming of all of this, basically, uh, at the end of the scene. Um, he walks up and he's introduced to, uh, Viper Sniper walks up and confronts him. And he's like, hey, Trevor, what's up? Trevor! <sighs> what would Lindsay want me to do? Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, he's like, you and I are going to change history. And Trevor's like, no. And basically decides, I'm not going to become the evil Viper Sniper. And I guess that's him making the correct decision. Oh, no, it's not, because it doesn't fix no, anything. We'll it, get to yeah, it later. Yeah, 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 you're right. I don't know. Shall we begin? 
Today, you and I are gonna change history. No. But anyway, so then Viper Sniper just shoots the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, it just shoots him like in the arm. Like in the ch it seems like in the chest like a couple times. You won't do it. <laughs> You're right. For the time being, I won't kill you. But I will torture you until you change your mind. Yeah? Well, my mind's made up. We'll see. I have lots of bullets. Does we cut Jayden back. Shows up. Yeah, we're about to. Then yeah. we cut back, and then meanwhile, Spade just confesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, he looks at looks at the time remaining. Right, he's like, uh, oh, I'm evil. I'm evil. I'm evil. Boy. Yeah, he's like, oh wait, there's only like ten minutes left in the movie. Oh, me, oh, guys. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Uh, Car Cargo boy. I'm evil. Uh, you guys should kill me. <laughs> he, he like says his like evil code name, and yeah. then he's like, who? I'm the Crypt Spade. <laughs> is what he says. Like, what? I am the Crypt Spade. I'm sorry. What was that, Brad? Was I not loud enough? I said, I am the Crypt Spade. Cool. What does that mean? What? Oh, Who? What? I, My I, same I, reaction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm the evil right hand man of the Viper Sniper. And they're like, oh. What? Okay. Okay. I'm the Viper Sniper's right hand man. I would give my life for him to win this war. Oh. Well, that's a strange turn of events. Oh, hang on, hang on a second. I've never heard of anyone named the Crypt Spade. Really? I tried so hard to make a good impression. Perhaps knowing that I'm the one who killed Decker, Reese, and Lindsay will make you take me seriously. That was you. <laughs> uh, and then I think he kills Mark with a playing card because he sticks it in his mouth and it does the gas thing. So I think Mark dies no, here. No. Uh, uh, but then he starts throwing it, fucking yeah. <laughs> exploding playing cards at <laughs> Cargo is, Boy. He just like, was like, oh, let me just dodge out of the way of that real yeah, quick. Yeah, uh, and then uh, meanwhile, uh, Colin Phantom's in the in the kitchen just eating chips. <laughs> yeah. not paying it. There's explosions in the rest of the house. He's just eating chips. God. Then, Kyle, we cut back to the park. Woo! And this is it. This is our scene. This is our moment. Um, this originally, from my understanding, was supposed to be other extras. Yes. Or other people. Maybe even Colin Phantom and somebody else. Something happened where they weren't able, for scheduling purposes, to mm. get the people that should have been in the scene. I think we were supposed to have a smaller, different extra role or something. Um, but they were like, hey, you guys want to be agents? And we were like, fuck sure, yes, yes we do. absolutely. So we get to show up and roll. So my understanding of the scene was that we were supposed to be coming out of like a time portal, I thought yeah. they said at the time, right? When it we it would have been like... Uh, I was thinking this was going to be game. the end of Endgame, yes. baby. I thought we were going to like, <laughs> on your left. And we were like going to fucking come out of the portal. Yes. On your left. But we just kind of walk up. I, I don't know exactly what all transpired there, what what is supposed to be happening. Because we were just getting fed little... We never saw a script. We didn't mm. have any lines. We were just getting nope. fed, like, bits of information and told what to do, basically. So we walk up, and we get to have our moment yep, in the sun, yep. Kyle. Very dramatic <laughs> poses and whatnot. Walk out of the portal, or looking, not the portal. snazzy. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, Diane gets immediately wasted. <laughs> Yes, shoots her and kills her immediately. What the? You shouldn't be here. I'm serious, Viper. Leave Trevor alone. <gasps> Diane, no, no. no. <laughs> um, so when we were filming this, we probably filmed I don't know at least six takes of each of these yeah. like little mo like main beats here throughout this. Um, again, we never saw a script. Again, we didn't have any lines or anything, yeah. so it didn't really matter. It was more like, okay, now stand there and look at this. Now look uh, look intimidating, look scared or whatever, look concerned, blah, 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 um, for my memory. Um, but so Diane gets wasted, and he's very upset about that. And then while he's tending to Diane, it's our time to shine, Kyle. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so we patiently wait for him to change out his gun round. Yes. Sorry about that, Jaden. I'm sure watching me kill Diane, what, twice now? And Natalie once? Gotta suck a little. Wait, did you even know about that? Time travel's a little crazy. Whatever. Just toss her body out of our way. Shut up! Why are you doing this? Uh, yeah. To a time charge. Yes. Which he shoots you with. Off screen. Off screen. <laughs> and then we get a great shot of you. <laughs> it's called a time charge. Nifty little invention. The only way to unfreeze a victim is to hit him with the second charge. Unfortunately, time charges from the future won't be invented for another 10 years. 
frozen in time. So, spoilers, or not spoilers, at the beginning, that's, uh, this is where this all ties back together. Mm. I finally unfrozen Kyle now. Haven't you done enough? Just stop! But, uh, so you get time frozen forever, and he explains that time charges aren't invented into the future, and that was his last yeah. one, so you were literally frozen forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> forever. Uh, until luckily Agent Jaden Hill which, sent us one Which, from by the, the way, in canon, my character's still alive. <laughs> yes! <laughs> The only way to unfreeze a victim? Well, you don't know I died. I was just wounded. That's how I was able to get here and save your ass, Kyle. Um, but, uh, and then I go in, I charge in and do a big uh, swinging haymaker at yep, him. completely and whiffed. just completely dodges me. Uh, I think I threw that punch at him like six or seven times. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, they, they looked at me and they were like, well, let's kill him immediately. And they looked at you and you're like, he's 6'3". That's at least intimidating. <laughs> so I took a swing and then, but I love it because he just pushes me. He just sidesteps, pushes me out of the way and just shoots me as I yep. fall over. Uh, I was wearing this suit, which I bought specifically to go be in the movie. <laughs> yep. And I just ate shit on grass and my knees still have grass stains. I, think, uh, and no. I was like, whatever, I don't care. Uh, gonna dry clean, I will but. say the conditions for our shooting was very on Arizona. Yes, it okay. rained. Yeah. <laughs> before not while we were filming, but before like leading up to filming this mm. whole night scene where we were in, it had been raining on and off like for like the whole mid yeah, part of the day it, or whatever. It caused some chaos with the exposure. Yeah, well that and then so there was all kinds of and this is the kind of thing you never know about when we're doing these reviews here. Mm. You never know about any of this kind of shit. So when we went to shoot this scene, it was at a baseball field at a high school. Yes. Yes. Which so you think that the high school is in control of the baseball field. Yes. No, it's city it's ran. It's a city run property. So they got permission from the high school to shoot on this baseball field. They were going to turn the lights on for mm. the field at the with you know at the school so that when the, it got dark they would just use the baseball field lights to film it with which totally whatever sure yeah. and then but when they got there they found out that it's run by the city and so the city has to turn the lights on and they hadn't cleared that with the city or you know they hadn't gotten permission yeah. or, it's, again this is my recollection from the what we overheard of the conversation blame, if we're gonna blame anybody for that blame the goddamn school because the, uh, yeah I don't know they, you think they would anyways so then they <laughs> they had some lights with them mm. So the sun is starting to go down. Things are getting dark, um, which is why this scene starts. It's like dusky yeah. or whatever. But yeah. this ends. It's like nighttime. nighttime. We were there for like four hours or whatever over the course of filming this. Um, at least four hours. Or I think it was probably around four hours. Um, and so we left early, though. They were still yeah. filming yeah, when we yeah. left. I don't know how and, much. And it got filming. so dark to the point where they were just like, all right, let's turn some headlights from. Vehicles. That's what I was going to say. So they brought lights with them, like actual lights to use. But they couldn't get. Oh, yeah. They didn't have power. Because the outlets were locked or something yes. like that so they couldn't get in the outlet oh my so God. they finally got to the point where they literally just pulled some cars up to the fence in the outfield and turned the high beams yep. on which is incredible and it, honestly it doesn't look it, it, all things considered it looks about as good as it could yeah. considering the shooting conditions um but so we get wasted but then Jaden jumps in and gets to do his fight and I have to also I it cracked me up when I was watching it this time when you get frozen I have zero reaction yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a time charge nifty little invention I feel like in some of the takes I reacted, but in that one, the one they used, I just don't even look at you. Nope. I don't know if I didn't realize we were, I don't know what was going on there, Ugh. but they're just, uh, I'm just like, uh, and you're like, Ugh, and cause Jaden looks at you and yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm locked on in on Viper Sniper. So it's all right. We're expendable. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and then um, I get killed, and then uh, also surprise Raz is just here like running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. She's like, she was uh, being asked to to follow Jay uh, to follow Jaden and be like just look over and 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 see if you can help guide yeah, him or basically And, and it was very funny to us in this moment when we were filming this then because we were like, who is this woman? And they we didn't like when it, they were busy. So we didn't like get a lot of background knowledge on who this is or what was going on. Very dressed out of place as well. When yeah. I was, we were like, like, why she's and, and Jay, because we did get to sit and talk to Ben for quite a while. while yeah. We were waiting to film stuff. And Ben, great guy. Ben, super nice. Ben is literally one of the nicest people. He was met. so <laughs> nice. And I, 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 I we apologized to him thoroughly for, <laughs> for the first 
first few episodes, but he was very nice. Mm. Um, he, he, you know, he he did say, and I just to be very straightforward, he did say that after we he saw the first review that we put out that he was it upset him that he was he did not feel good, mm. and I felt terrible. <laughs> I hated I did, myself. I, absolutely. For like, but yeah. then he like told us like it gave him fuel yeah. to kind of do want to do better. Yeah. And like, like and, and then he came to appreciate it, and 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 kind of mm-hmm. I think he got to the point. At least it seemed like because he again he he was very friendly. We had we talked to him for at least an hour or so mm-hmm. and just chit chatting and very nice. Um, and we got along great. But I, and so I think like you said, eventually I think also he kind of came around to like being open to the fact that we're more so laughing with the movie than yeah. directly at the movie, even yeah. though we can be a little mini. It's also it's, it's, it's kind of like the old theory of the the death of the author kind of situation of like once once something is out there beyond your control yeah you either grow with it or separate yeah. yourself but he said uh yeah, like you said he said that it like really drove him to like work on his craft and stuff mm-hmm. and that was great but he's also now he's like full he, he, he yeah, doesn't even live in arizona anymore he, it, he it, was in it atlanta, atlanta or something i'm like not that. sure if it's, he was like a um uh, uh tv tv stuff right no well he does tv stuff but he was he's like a caseworker like in his day-to-day life mm-hmm. like his 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 like day job he does uh god i can't remember now he does like really meaningful work. He yes. like helps like impoverished people. Or just, yes. I don't know exactly what it was. I can't he, remember. He, he, he uh, basically he's a really good person, and we should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh god, I'm an he's asshole. He's making me feel like a really yeah, bad person. I'm a giant asshole. Also, yeah. he was freaking yeah, he's awesome super. And so anyway, our hats. so he signed our hats. We have video of that. We'll include that right there. On the yes. You should have just joined me. But I also want to talk about the fight scene. They shot this fight scene. They had rehearsed this so much. They we would sit we sat mm-hmm. there and watched them film this fight scene like five times in a row, mm. the whole thing, so they could get like a bunch of different angles of it and stuff. And I was blown away. They just kept doing it over and over. I was getting tired just watching them, man. I was like, what is going on? But we do have some behind the scenes footage of the fight scene being filmed. Get out of here! I just don't want to get in his shot. Like this. No, you're not. Is that what we're stupid to? I will, I want to mention too, I don't know if you noticed this, Kyle. There is one moment in the fight scene. I'm dead at this point. <laughs> If you look in the background of the oh, you're right. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> walking through the background. God damn it! Clearly, I don't. I clearly didn't realize they were shooting that way, or I don't. I don't remember how this happened. But I am just up against the fence in the background as they're fighting <laughs> on the ground, and I'm like standing there with this hat on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh no. Oh, oh god. Shit. Don't go that way. I just don't want to get in his shot. Like this. Amazing. It's like a big split second. If you weren't paying attention, you would miss it. I only noticed it because of the hat. And then I was like, that's not Ben. That's, that's me. That's you. Because <laughs> <laughs> after this was, I think this is the part where uh, where Trevor was fighting. Yeah. Or Viper Sniper. So Ben was yeah. standing off to the side, like chit-chatting with us and stuff. <laughs> and this and is I, where we had him sign. The guy who hat. played Viper Sniper, I uh, just had to look up his name. Yeah. Uh, Sean. Sean he, he's a pretty nice dude, too. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. he was a former cop who got Something like that. He does stuff stunts like and stuff, I yeah. think. Yeah, and uh, it, it, dude, him and Ben, like their their choreography was fantastic, and they just went over, over, and over the whole thing. Like normally, I would expect that like a fight scene like that, they would break it up into like you mm-hmm. know sections and do they did yeah. the whole fight and and like and just over and over and over. And Clay just got different angles in yeah. it, and it, it worked. Yeah. Like, did, you know, credit to their craft, they were really consistent. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Hey guys, Sean Baruby here, and I play Viper Sniper in Wrath of the Viper Sniper. 
Uh, it was cool to get to work with Clay finally. I, uh, I followed him for a while, Arizona independent filmmaker. I saw the, the first two uh, movies of this installment, Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. And uh, I was hoping to be part of the third, so I reached out to him, um, auditioned, and got the role. It was pretty cool to play the, the deadliest, baddest uh, villain that this team has met to date. So one cool fact about this movie is Clay did principal photography in four days. That is an amazing accomplishment. If you've never made a film, <laughs> believe me, that is hard to do. And then he uh, pieced it together, video effects, sound effects, and it came out awesome. Uh, my friends over at Good, Bad, Bad, and Bad, um, it was cool working with you guys on set in one of the scenes, and I, I can't wait to watch your review. So to everybody out there, thank you for your support. Go watch this on Tubi, Amazon Prime, and other streaming services, and enjoy. Uh, but yeah, if you want to look in the in the movie forty seven thirteen roughly, I'll, and I'll put it in. But if you're watching yourself, I it's where I make my little <laughs> appearance in the background. Oh, oh goodness! Um, it also feels like I saw they were because I'm trying to like back out. Of the, <laughs> it almost feels like I'm trying to like back out of the frame or something. It's hard to tell. I don't know. Oh, that's great. Um, but then, so Trevor now gets shot, and he's, like, injured or whatever, or gets shot again, maybe. I don't know. He's injured, and Raz shows up and teleports him, voips him into, into the netherworld. The, yeah, <laughs> they're now in the time The time vortex, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, I was like, did she just teleport him into the opening credits from Pocket Man and Cargo Boy 2? Because the background swirling effects looks very yeah, similar to yeah, the effects. It's like that, that weird, like, amber kind of Yeah, like, Yeah, swirling texture. stuff, yeah. Uh, it's incredible. So then um, she basically explains to him, sh he's like, where are we? She's like, don't you mean when, when? are we? Where are we? Where are we? I think you mean when, when are we? This is the past. Actually, this is the exact moment your buddy Jay had split into eight different timelines. <laughs> so we're in the past and we're at the moment where Jaden is talking to Taro on some beach somewhere. Mm. And this is the moment where he split the timeline and this is where he tried to save Jade or Trevor like every time or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so they're watching this and we see him talking to Taro about trying to his plan to save Trevor. Something was different this time. I could feel it. Nothing was different, brother. Things happened differently, but with the same result. I have an idea. There was a moment where I knew he was lost. I could have avoided it, but, but I didn't act quickly. So basically it's explained that Jaden was able to convince this council, and this is what Pocket Man says to kind of boil it down. He's like, so basically Jaden convinced a council of time traveling aliens into changing the timeline to save me. And they're like, yeah, close enough. Yeah, basically, that's yeah, it. Basically. See, 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 over the course of two decades, you, 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 you Trevor, Trevor, will destroy humanity. I love this ending, Kyle. I was it, losing my shit the whole time. <laughs> we almost get a clip show here because he like literally then goes back. Go, Here's all the things back in time. Yeah. Here's Lindsay. In the and, first movie, yeah. <laughs> and they're like introducing, they flash back to villain class mm -hmm. and they set up the, um, uh, it's it's like a blue, bootleg clip show. It's kind of amazing. This is a class where Jay talks about every dangerous villain. Except you. So... I'm number one. Did you learn about any other bad guy who destroyed the galaxy? I don't think so. And then they keep kind of going through different scenes and stuff, and they get to the point, they're like, this is the only timeline that even got close to working because this is the only timeline that had Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. And this moment, Kyle, I was like, ah. I got a little tipped. I was like, oh, it worked. This last time that Taro found everything was different from the rest. This is the only timeline to feature Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. Jay almost fixed everything. Kyle, they got me! <laughs> they fucking got me! I was like, it hit me a little bit. I was like, oh, that's sweet. I like Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. We're kind of like superheroes. Or... At least we were. Um, it was so cheesy, but it was a little sentimental, mm. and it was working for me. Um, 
Then we cut to a scene, and I think they're watching this, where we see Jaden talking to Colin Phantom. Yes. And he's like, I need something that can record memory. Record memory that, that's unaffected by time. Something yeah. Unaffected by. By like the electromagnetic time yes. waves or some nonsense made up or whatever. I need you to make me something that can record my memories. Something that I could wear or keep close to me at all times. Your memories? That's not going to be easy. And I'm going to make it a little harder on you too. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't want electromagnetic waves or anything that could damage the recording. It has to be able to function while I'm traveling through time. And I was like, Kyle. Holy shit, Kyle. They wrote in a canonical explanation for the fucking hand. <laughs> It was great. Point, I was it so was great. Uh, this is everything I ever wanted it to be. I'm not kidding. I was, I don't know exactly what's happening here, but I was absolutely <laughs> in love with it. I was dying. Oh, um, oh it's so much fun. I don't think, I don't think that's think possible. This is really, this is really important, important, Colin. I'll see what I can do. They get to the point where Pocket Man realizes, and they basically say to him, look, you can save the day by killing yourself. Yes, basically. Not just killing yourself, removing yourself from, from existence. He never existed. You, you basically get Peter Parkered from No Way Home. Yeah. There has to be something we can do, right? There is. We can remove you. Remove me. You mean like, kill me? Essentially. That you will no longer exist, and all memory of you will disappear. Yeah, essentially, like you voip out Sorry, of spoiler. <laughs> yeah, you voip out of existence, and they're, he's like, "Oh, okay." Um, but before he goes, Cargo Boy shows up. You're not gonna hit me again, right? I can't take any more pain. No, Kyle. I'm glad you're here, buddy. And they get to say goodbye and do their little handshake one more time. Yeah. Are we just friends again? The best, the best. Yeah. Oh, but I do I like how <laughs> I do like how Taros is like using his like time powers to erase him, and then the Viper snipers like coming in there like punch through the time portal. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't over yet. He's like, no, let me in there. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, my God. But as he's about to go, uh, Pocket Man's like, all right, I guess it's time to go. But I got one more question. Why does Jaden always wear that stupid hat? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do I have time for one more question? This has been bugging me for so long. Why does Jay wear that stupid, ugly hat? What? What are you asking? Oh, come on. You're the masters of time. You must know why he wears the dumb thing. Maybe he's just got bad fashion. <laughs> but they go, it's just a hat. Trevor, it's just a hat. <sighs> I knew it. Jaden just says really bad style. It's, it's, yeah, he just has a bad style or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, wait, no, I thought in the last scene it was supposed And we'll oh, get there, wait. we'll get there. But I, then they, I thought they had set me up and I, I was so amped. And then this scene, I was like, oh no, it is just a hat. Oh, but, subversion. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, but they're like, nah, he's just got terrible style. And I was like, oh, fuck, okay. But then he uh, he walks into the time oblivion or whatever, and yes. it just dissolves to white, and the credits roll. Uh, and we get a very sad song for a minute. And then we get the post credit scene. And whoop, we zip back yep. into the house. Yep, and everybody's there, minus Trevor. All course. hanging out in the kitchen. Jaden's in his room, though. And he picks his hat up and he pulls, he pulls out a memory card. like a memory card <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> pops an SD card out of his hat. Yeah, he pops an SD card out of his hat. And then he walks. I actually wouldn't even be surprised if that's. I could, I didn't look very closely yeah. at what it was. But uh, he pops an SD card out of his hat. And then he walks into the kitchen. And, and I'm like, oh, shit. The hat, Kyle. The hat mm -hmm. remembers pocket. <laughs> yep. I need to ask you guys for a favor. I'm in. Whatever it is. Thanks, Mark. He wants to find someone who doesn't exist. Okay, my brain just exploded. Someone who did exist, but was recently erased from existence. Okay, now my brain has actually exploded? We need to find somebody 
who doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. And they're like, what? <laughs> and then he's like, Taro, I need you. And then little gold sparklies start coming down. And then, boo, we're out of there, Kyle. Boom. Jay, how exactly are we going to do this? I honestly don't know. But it's time for the world to meet Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. <laughs> who? Taro, I need you. Movie's yes, great. it's great. I love it. Holy shit! Ooh. That whole ending of this movie, I was I was grinning ear to ear. Anything, everything from the the uh, the parking or the the baseball field scene to the end, I was legitimately grinning the whole time. I love the little callbacks and references to stuff from previous movies. Some of the stuff it does feel like they actually set up. Yeah, like like some of the the the, the big rev- I don't know some of the stuff I felt because like, they, they there's this whole scene where they explain that they never explained who the number one villain was in the on the list in like the first or second movie, mm. and then it finds out later that that's because it's Viper Sniper yeah, yeah. who is Trevor, and it's oh it's very I don't know man, once it's again. a mess. But it's a fun mess. Yeah, and, and, and once again, just the ability to make an entertaining product from beginning to end. Yeah. They have the formula. Yeah. No, I I, I, I ate this one up. I, I thought it was tons of fun. I will say I thought the first or maybe the second one felt more structured and cohesive. Mm. I think the second one definitely felt like a more like contained story the first half of this movie is a little disjointed and we just kind of bounce around in a way that i found a little hard to like figure out what what we were even think, setting yeah, up and the I, story, I but the, the second that trevor is like i'm you like, yeah he learns i'm you from the future we get more <laughs> of a a solid direction yes yes i agree i 100 percent agree that from that point to the end i think the movie works a lot better and is a lot more entertaining especially as a culmination although maybe not maybe they'll make another one because we do have we got to go into the time bait. vortex with uh, to go rescue yep. Pocket Man from Oblivion. <laughs> I don't even know what that movie would be. I'm sure they're actually. It sounds like they probably won't make another one. If I had to guess, who knows? Um, my guess though is that that's more of just like a fun tease. Like, hey, maybe they'll save them. Like, there's hope mm. or whatever, as opposed to like an actual sequel bait kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, my understanding is that they probably won't make another one. That this is really kind of designed to be the end of the story for Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. But I could be wrong about that. We don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day. Exactly. It'd be great if 10 years down the road they do it and it's like adult uh, Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. That would be so much fun. But yeah, absolutely good, bad. If you haven't already watched it, again, it's only an hour long. Go check it out on Tubi or Amazon Prime or wherever you want. Could not recommend it enough. Had so much fun watching it and hanging out uh, with everybody involved. Thank you again so much, Adam and Clay, Jeremy, um, everybody. Yep. Uh, Sorry. That's my mom. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I didn't know if you needed that. Okay. No, no, we're good. Um, but thank you to everybody involved. Uh, again, uh, Clay, Adam, just everybody. Everybody who's in, uh, who was super nice to us, yes. uh, super friendly, uh, and let us be a part. Uh, in, and perfect. Again, I could not stress enough how little we wanted to be in the movie. Like, how... Uh, our cameos were perfect. It yes. was exactly it, what we yes, wanted. Yes, it was in, out, and then we were relevant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we show up, we get fucking killed, and then we're out of the movie. It's great. Could not have been uh, but better. But man, yes, meeting everybody behind the scenes and seeing how, like, you know, seeing how the sausage is made, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Man, that was a treat. It that was just a ton of great. fun, and it was a lot of, yeah, it was just, it was wild. Um, And, and honestly, I can't, you know, just to, I never would have guessed, you know, when we reviewed the first one three or four, five years, however long ago it was. Uh, to, to get to be in the third one, even in the role. <laughs> and again, for, to, the, I cannot stress enough how perfect I thought our cameo was. At least great. for me. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. Like, like yeah. literally, it's... it's uh, We get like a cool moment where we're like, da, da, yeah. we're the fucking Avengers. And it's completely <laughs> subverted. <laughs> yeah, and then we just get murdered, which I thought was just so funny uh, and so great. So yeah, just... Um, and then you get frozen in time forever. I, I love it. Uh, just, again... <laughs> Can't thank you all enough, uh, and yeah, go check out uh, Wrath of the Viper Sniper. 100%. Hey guys, hey everyone, I'm Clay Moffat, and I play the famous grill guy in Wrath of the Viper Sniper and Pocket Man and Cargo Boy, and I also like, you know, write, edit, direct, or whatever. But I just wanted to take a minute and thank you guys, because honestly, it's been a lot of fun. Good, bad, or bad, bad, Brian, Kyle, you guys are awesome. The viewers, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my films, watch these videos that Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad puts out, it means a lot to them and me as a filmmaker. But honestly, 
That's what we set out to do. We wanted to have fun when we made these films. It's called Pocket Man and Cargo Boy. There's bad guys named Pyroed, Sir Longbottom, the Viper Sniper. Obviously, it's not that serious. It's supposed to be cartoony and comic booky, but we wanted to add like serious elements. You know, that's why there's blood, gore, some awesome kung fu, we are. stuff like that. But it's been fun. And that's honestly all I can say about it is it's been fun. It's been fun to see people, random people that I did not know on the internet talk about my films. All it can do is put a smile on my face because that's the goal. You want people to watch the stuff that you produce. And it happened. Um, I think the films have gotten better as they've gone along, and that was the goal. That's always the goal with anything. But, you know, one last time, thank you guys. Thank you, audience. It's been fun. As always, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GB or BB. Support us there for a few bucks a month. Get access to stuff, including bonus content. I have a podcast called This Film is Lit, where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, I think our most recent episode will have been Watchmen. It's our first Ooh, graphic nice. novel. The The graphic novel changes quite a bit from the movie. Yes. Or, <laughs> or well, the, the movie, movie changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm actually reading yeah. that one. Uh, normally, Katie reads, but I'm going to be reading Watchmen. Um, I'm very. I've seen the movie before. I've never read the mm. the, the comic, so I'm interested to see. I know. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff changes, but yeah, I, that's that's. What I, th- I think you'll enjoy how the comic book, uh, how how much they changed on the movie because it's you look you'll read the comic book and you're like, what, what the f- what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, can't wait. Um, but yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, we also have merch. Just head over to tpublic.com, yes. search for Good, Better, Bad, Bad. Uh, I, th- I get... thought I was wearing it for a second, nah, but fine. no, this is our uh, Got that from in a mailbag. mailbag. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, tpublic.com, just search for Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad. You can buy some merch that also supports us. Um, but anyways, uh, Twitch, you can uh, occasionally we'll stream on there. Uh, and that, I think, is everything that matters. Until next time, keep watching movies, especially, especially oh goodness, especially Wrath of the Viper Sniper or any of the Pocket Man and Carbon oh, movies. So Go fun. check them out. Uh, Overnight Pictures, they're 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 good people making funny, silly movies, uh, and that could use your support. And they're just they're the best. So thank you again. We love yep. you. Until next time, signing off, Agent Lance Goodbad and Frank. <laughs> I can't say it, Franklin McBad.